Did you companies. just float out the idea of getting rid of income taxes and replacing it with tariffs? Well, okay. Were you serious about that? Our, yeah, sure. But why not? Because we, ready? Our country was the richest in the, relatively, in the 1880s and 1890s. A president who was assassinated named McKinley, he was the tariff king. He spoke beautifully of tariffs. His, his language was really beautiful. Uh, we will not allow the enemy to come in and take our jobs and take our factories and take our workers and take our families unless they pay a big price. So Donald J. Trump is floating the idea of abolishing the federal income tax and replacing it. Okay, because everybody's going, well, what is it going to replace? You're going to have Americans arguing against their own interest uh, and saying this is a bad idea because he's, you know, what is he going to replace it with? Well, he's going to replace it with tariffs. That's his idea, at least. Now, we know that in reality, this is so monumental that it would probably take more than one presidential term to get this, you know, actually enacted or to get income taxes abolished. Now, America has not always had an income tax, and the income tax was supposed to be temporary, but here we are, right? Like, you know, government never relinquishes its authority uh, to do anything, let alone tax. So in 1913, the same year, by the way, the Federal Reserve came into existence, interestingly enough. The income tax was enacted. Now, in the beginning, it hit very high income earners. They had a tax rate of up to 90% for some incomes. Now, very few people actually paid that, right? But it was there, okay? So we live in an era of relatively low taxation, the highest rate being uh, somewhere in the 30s. I'm not a tax expert, but... Uh, we live in an era of relatively low taxation, but the problem is that that may not last simply because we're racking up debt hand over fist, $35 trillion and counting. And the big price is tariffs. And he'd speak like that, but he was right. And then around in the early 1900s, they switched over stupidly to, frankly, an income tax. And you know why? Because countries were putting a lot of pressure on America. We don't want to pay tariffs. Please don't. You know, they believe me, they control our politicians. If you look at the kind of numbers that these guys make then and now. But we had a commission meeting in the uh, eight. I think it was 1887. Think of this problem. We were so rich. We had so much money. We didn't know what to do. So they set up a blue ribbon Commission on Tariffs, and the sole purpose is what to do with all the money we had. We were so rich because we were taxing other people for coming in and taking our jobs. You know, uh, let me say this parenthetically. In that three-hour interview with Joe Rogan, I better never hear Kamala Harris or any of her campaign surrogates try to advance this notion that Trump uh, is lacking in cognitive uh, abilities, right? He sat there with Rogan for three hours, discussed everything from uh, history to uh, foreign policy and economics, uh, showed that he's humorous and uh, quick thinking. And, uh, you know, these guys would have you believe that he's in the same state as Joe Biden. Look, I'd like to see Kamala Harris do an hour and a half with Joe Rogan. Not going to happen, though. Uh, she is going on Club Shay Shay. Uh, we'll see how that works out, right? Uh, he tends to get people, but I can guarantee you that Shannon Sharp will not be uh, in any way critical of Kamala Harris or ask her tough questions like this narrative here that Joe Rogan went into about abolishing the income tax. Uh, so speaking of Trump recounting history, he was talking about President McKinley. Uh, guy was a president from 1897 until 1901. He got assassinated, and then uh, Teddy Roosevelt was his vice president. He came in. Anyway, Trump called McKinley the tariff king. Now, mind you, okay, we're talking about the uh, late 1800s, right? So 
prior to 1913, we didn't have an income tax at this time. How was this country making money? All right, so Trump was recounting how uh, McKinley said, we will not allow the enemy to come in and take our jobs and take our factories and take our workers and take our families unless they pay a big price. Trump added, and the big price is tariffs. So this isn't the first time that Trump has hinted at a, the elimination of the income tax. In June, Trump floated the idea that revenue from tariffs could replace federal revenue from income taxes. Uh, he also mentioned this during a Fox News segment at a Bronx barbershop. Uh, Trump was asked by one of the patrons of the barbershop uh, if the U.S. could end all federal taxation, prompting him to praise policies from the late 19th century uh, in which we didn't have an income tax at that time. Now, um, of course, you know, people will definitely be asking, you know, how are we going to make that up? How are we going to fund our defense, for example? Big line item, right? Uh, well, I think that this will help us to be more fiscally uh, responsible because, you know, who wants to get rid of the income tax, impose these tariffs, and then fund all of the BS that we're funding, right? We may think twice about giving uh, Vladimir Zelensky all this money and funding uh, foreign proxy wars, or we may think twice about bringing all of these non-Americans into the country uh, and just reaping largesse on them at the expense of our citizens. We just did a video about that, um, talking about how we have uh, jeopardized our standing here at home to care for people who are not citizens. It's wrong, all right? And I don't want to hear about, oh, well, it's the humane thing to do. They're seeking economic asylum. Where do Americans go when they need economic asylum, okay? What does our government do for them, right? What is, what is our government doing to help the individuals who were affected by Hurricane Helene over in Appalachia? They offered them the opportunity to apply for $750. Okay, I've spent more than that in the last three weeks in groceries. Okay, and you probably have spent that or more. All right, but as you might imagine, such talk has raised alarms. Getting rid of the income tax has raised alarms among budget watchdogs, the experts, right? They got to come out of the woodwork and have their say uh, because they love to feed at the public trough, many of them. They've warned on the exploding federal deficit, which is a problem we need to get spending under control. Uh, while it will expand under either Trump or Kamala Harris, the Penn Wharton budget model and the Committee for Responsible Federal Budgets have said Trump policies would produce a much deeper hole. Yeah, it will produce a much deeper hole if we don't get spending under control, but these people are actually arguing for the continued imposition of an income tax on we the people. Now, again, I want you to go into the comments and tell me how much you'd be able to do if they didn't have an income tax. Now, mind you, if we don't have an income tax, Americans are gonna buy more stuff. Most Americans, we're gonna buy more assets, right? Either way, that's gonna benefit the overall economy. If you're buying more stuff from China and we've imposed these tariffs on China, then that just means that, hey, China will make out, but so will we, right? Uh, as Wall Street starts to price in growing odds of a Trump victory in November, U.S. bond yields have climbed as the Treasury Department would be expected to flood the market with bigger auctions to finance widening deficits and bigger debt interest payments. Meanwhile, many economists have dismissed the idea of tariff revenue replacing income tax revenue. Garrett Watson, a senior policy analyst at the Tax Foundation, told CNBC that Trump's tariffs would generate an estimated, uh, estimated $3.8 trillion in revenue over 10 years, just a fraction of the $33 trillion that individual income taxes generate. Right. But again, if we get spending under control, we don't need $33 trillion that the income tax generates. And $3.8 trillion Okay, that's a little over 10% of the $33 trillion, right? 
So it sounds like you could bring those tax rates down, okay? Uh, correspondingly, if you can't eliminate it, this guy just made the argument for definitely being able to reduce it, okay? Uh, Trump's plan for across the board tariffs with outside hikes on countries like China. It's not outsides. It's based on how many imports we're getting from a particular country. Everything in your house, every, the clothes on your back, majority of it is made in China, okay? Um, they're saying this would be largely passed on to American consumers, raising prices and likely stoking inflation, economists have said. Well, Americans can do something about that. We need to, as the government controls its spending, we need to control our consumption, okay? Do we really need the latest 2025 Camaro or whatever it is the hot car is today. Uh, I argue and have argued on this channel for uh, quite some time that we need to pump money into assets. And I tell you what, eliminating the income tax or greatly reducing it would give all of us an opportunity to reap the rewards of our own labor. All right. At this point, we really got to start questioning the income tax because the government is printing up so much money. It's like, hey, why you need my $33 trillion? Uh, you can just print it up, right? But more fundamentally, we need to ask ourselves, what are we spending money on? Why do we need so much money from income taxation? Again, proxy wars, foreign aid, Funding immigration here in our country, right? Why do we, let's rethink that also.